Toxicology is an entire field in and of itself. Fortunately, most of the more common overdoses leading to cardiac arrest are treated with only a few antidotes. Opioid toxicity may be the most familiar to many providers. Significant toxicity is treated with naloxone. Cardiovascular collapse from opioids alone is uncommon, but severe respiratory depression is often present. Naloxone may be used to avoid intubation or may be considered as an adjunct if opioid overdose is suspected. Many medications cause sodium channel blocking effects. These delay nerve conduction and may interfere with cardiac myocyte function. Some of the more common sodium channel blocking agents present in overdose include diphenhydramine, cocaine, and tricyclic antidepressants. These may be suspected if there's a history of ingestion and a widened QRS, particularly if a prominent terminal R wave is present in the AVR lead. Hypertonic amps of sodium bicarbonate are useful to provide a large sodium load, which may help overcome some of the sodium channel blockade. In addition, the effect of raising the pH may have an advantage for activating these channels as well. So next, let's talk about calcium channel blockers. These interrupt the influx of calcium and may have important cardiovascular effects. Verapamil and diltiazem are the most lethal calcium channel blockers in overdose. Their cardiodepressant effects may be treated with aggressive calcium administration. In addition, glucagon may help create an alternative pathway for myocyte contractility. Epinephrine or other inotropes or vasopressors may be considered as adjunctive therapy as well. If these therapies are ineffective, high-dose insulin and glucose infusion or intravenous lipid emulsion may be considered, especially if local protocols exist. Ultimately, mechanical circulatory support may be considered for recoverable cases. Beta blocker toxicity is managed in a very similar fashion to calcium channel blockers. Glucagon is first-line therapy, but calcium may also provide additional inotropy. Epinephrine, dobutamine, or isoproteranol may help overcome the adrenergic blockade. High-dose insulin and glucose therapy or intravenous lipid emulsion may be considered for salvage, and mechanical circulatory support may be appropriate for some cases. Digoxin deserves special mention because it has a specific antidote, which is effective, but only when the diagnosis is recognized. Patients with digoxin toxicity may display a wide range of Brady dysrhythmias, essentially any type, and hyperkalemia is usually present. Bidirectional ventricular tachycardia is a rare but specific finding. Digoxin-specific antibodies can be administered for significant toxicity and should usually be coordinated with a local toxicologist. Often, toxic ingestions involve multiple agents, and they may have concomitant toxicities. Be aware of accompanying overdoses, which may be asymptomatic, like acetaminophen or salicylates, although these generally don't result in immediate cardiovascular collapse. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.